this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the filter concepts. Just walk through that again, just to clear up any confusion that anyone may have regarding how the filters work. So I'm going to go through cutoff, resonance, and slope. And then in the next video, I'll look at the filter cutoff envelope and walk through that again. So I've got oscillator one here set up with, this is just the initialize patch. And in fact, let me, I've got the panning still to the left here from the last video, but let me go ahead and play this again. And I'm going to add a VCF. This is a voltage controlled filter. That's what the acronym is. And I'll go through several of these low pass filter types, just kind of give you an overview of these for Zebra 2 in another video. But for now, I want to just select the LP12 dB. Okay, and I'm going to leave it. Actually, I'm going to switch out oscillator one. I'm going to remove that and just add a noise generator. And we'll just stick with white noise. And let's check that out. Actually, I'll bring the volume down so I don't blast anybody out. All right, so... In fact, we don't need the oscilloscope right now. We can just work with the spectrum analyzer. And probably what I'll do is just so I can get a good signal level, is I'll just bring the master volume down on the fader here all the way to zero actually so that I can talk and you can see what's going on. And then I'll bring it up when I want to demonstrate what effect that the filter is having on the sound. So. All right, so now what we want to do is figure out, okay, what is cutoff, what is resonance, and what is slope. So right now the cutoff, this is a low-pass filter, which if you recall from the one of the free videos that was put out earlier, the low-pass filter allows frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency to pass through the filter, all right? Right now, the cutoff frequency is at its maximum, so it's it's way up here, okay? So pretty much all the frequencies that are present in this white noise signal are allowed to pass through. Well, if I bring the cutoff down, we'll start to see a change here on the spectrum analyzer. So let me go ahead, and I'm just going to hold a note down. And so now we see the white noise signal being displayed in the spectrum analyzer. And if I bring the cutoff down you'll start to see that there's this roll-off occurring here. See how those frequencies started to drop? If I bring it back up again, now they moved up. So if I bring it down, what's happening is it's cutting out. It's only allowing frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency to pass through unattenuated, unaffected by the filter. And then anything above the cutoff, well at the cutoff frequency, if you recall from the free video, the attenuation is equal to minus 3 dB from where it normally is, or where it would be otherwise, if the filter wasn't present. Above the cutoff frequency, the decrease in level follows the slope, which in this case is 12 dB per octave, all right? So if we zoom in here, and we look at the range 1,000 to 2,000, that's one octave. It's a doubling of the frequency, right? So we should see a 12 dB drop from 1,000, well, depending on where the cutoff is, the way the Zebra 2 cutoff frequency works is this number up here, right now it's 83. If you look up here, when I click the cutoff frequency, it's 83.0. That's actually a MIDI note number. And to get the cutoff frequency, we have to subtract 12. So in this case, it would be, well, let me just make it 82. 82 minus 12 would be 70, all right? And what we do is we take that 70 and we look up the MIDI note number. And so let me actually, this is probably a good time to go ahead and do this. I'm going to bring up Google. We'll go to look for MIDI note to frequencies, which is right here. And so here what we can do is just pull up. We're looking for the MIDI note number, which is 70, which in, in this case is this number here. And the way this chart works is if we scroll across the A sharp here, 
So that frequency is 466.16. So if we wanted to get a 1000 hertz frequency or 1 kilohertz, we'd have to look for a frequency that's close to that, which is uh, 1046.5, which corresponds to 84. That's the MIDI note number. So if I subtract 12 from that, I get 72. Or actually, in this case, I'd want to add 12 to that, so that would give me 96. So if I then come back over here and set this cutoff to 96, then we get the cutoff is set right here at near 1 kilohertz. It's not exactly 1 kilohertz. It's whatever frequency that MIDI note, 96 minus 12, because you have to subtract 12 from this cutoff value. I know it's kind of awkward, I think, in my opinion. People don't really typically think in MIDI note numbers. What would be nice from a display point of view is if the user interface indicated at least the note and octave, like C4, E5. The reason that, if, if you read the manual, the reason that this is done this way with Zebra 2 is they indicate it's because it's more musical, because it's matching the frequency of a specific note. And I agree with that. That's great. But from a user interface point of view, a human interface... It is a little awkward to work with. But at any rate, I mean, ideally, you're not really going to ever be converting to frequencies like that. You'll just basically fine-tune this cutoff frequency to what sounds good, really. I mean, ultimately, that's all it boils down to is just you fine-tune it till you like what you hear. But at this stage, in the learning stage, it's important to understand how this affects the frequency content over here and then also how to work with the synth so that you can get the result you're expecting. So if I bring this back up to 96, we've looked at how to convert that number into a frequency value. That should be 1 kilohertz roughly. If we go up 1 octave to 2 kilohertz, based on this slope of 12 dB per octave, we should get a 12 dB drop in level. So if we just kind of eyeball it here, it looks like it's averaging around uh, minus 60 to minus 54. And if we go up one octave and down 12 dB to between minus 72 and minus 66, we end up where the spectrum is showing that the noise signal is fluctuating around, which corresponds to a 12 dB per octave slope. Okay, now let me switch this to a 6 dB per octave slope. So now you can see that it's a much shallower slope. In fact, let me zoom out all the way. And this might actually be easier to see if I bring up span for this portion of the video. Let me do that because I think it'll be a little bit easier to see the curve because we can apply some smoothing to it. And the reason this looks kind of weird right now is because of the slope, the default slope on span. So now we can see that for white noise signal, we have equal level at all frequencies. In fact, if I disable that filter, we basically have an equal level all the way across at all frequencies for white noise. That's the definition of white noise. So if I bring that filter back in, we have a 6 dB per octave slope. And if I bring the cutoff frequency down to the number 96, which should be very close to 1 kilohertz right here, we can see that each one of these vertical lines represents a 3 dB decrease. So let me zoom in. And so at 1 kilohertz, we can see that, yeah, the signal has dropped about 3 dB. All right. And then from 1K to 2K, from here to here, which is one octave, it drops about 6 dB. All right. So that would be a 6 dB per octave slope. Now if we switch to a mid-drive, it's a 24 dB per octave slope. All right. So now what we see is, in fact, if I zoom out here, at 1K it's actually dropped significantly more than 3 dB. Okay. So for the same cutoff frequency, just a different filter slope. In fact, these particular filters, the different behavior that each one of these exhibits, like this one here, it's smooth all the way across up until 1K, and then it starts its slope. If we look at mid-drive, 
that's got more of a, a roll off, a faster roll off, even below the cutoff frequency. Because remember, the cutoff frequency is still at roughly one kilohertz. So now let's look at what effect. We'll listen to this in a minute. But right now, let's just look at what effect. If I go back to the 12 dB slope, LP 12 dB, and I increase the resonance value, you can see how that's putting a boost in at the one kilohertz point. And if I sweep that back and forth, that's actually a technique I use to help me understand where that cutoff frequency is if I need to. If I want to know where it is, I basically just boost the resonance and then sweep it through until I see that peak hit where I want to put it. So now I can reduce the resonance. Okay, so now let's look at, actually let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So let me bring the volume level up. Okay, let's change the slope. So what I'll do is I'll hold the note down and then I'll change that slope to a 6 dB per octave slope. And you could hear how it got brighter because these uh, higher frequencies were allowed to come through because of that lower slope. And now I'll switch from the 12 dB to a 24 dB. So that's the idea of cutoff, resonance, and slope. The next thing to look at is what drive does. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm going to switch it back to an LP12 dB and then we'll increase the drive. So basically what it's doing is it's putting more of a broadband boost around the cutoff. It's dropping some of the lower end. It's also, because of this broadband boost, it's lifting more of the high frequencies. The slope stays about the same. It's just lifting everything up in the higher end. So it ends up giving it a edgier feel, a brighter feel. Let's look at that with a 6 dB slope. In fact, with this filter, it's non-resonant and there is no drive parameter. Let's try the all around. Which remember is a 24 dB slope, so we have that very steep slope.
And that's really it. And then key follow would allow the cutoff frequency to track with the MIDI note in varying amounts. So for example, right now I'm holding down, let's see what note it is actually. Let's put a MIDI clip in here and see what MIDI note is coming through. So I'm holding down C3. So if we increase the key follow, that would have C3 be at a higher cutoff frequency than it would normally be. And then if I play C2, which is one octave lower, the cutoff frequency moved from here, or from here, moved down slightly. And what that's used to do is help set it up so that your higher notes may sound brighter because the cutoff frequency is tracking to the higher note than if you played a lower note. That would end up with a lower cutoff frequency than the higher note based on the key follow amount. Okay, that pretty much covers filter and I think what I'll do is in the next video, I'll look at the filter cutoff envelope. I'll see you in the next video.